hey everyone, welcome back to a new video. Before I begin on the stories, I just wanted to mention, if you have your own personal scary story that you would like to send me for me to possibly narrate here on the channel, you can do so by sending it to southerncannibal.com. So if you have a personal true scary story that you'd like to share, please consider sending it my way. Now that all that's out of the way, let's begin. When I was 16, I had a bit of a problem with authority, and I snuck out of the house pretty frequently. My parents and I never really had a good relationship, honestly. They were overbearing, and like I mentioned, I had this really weird complex with authority. I had that 16-year-old mentality that I was invulnerable, and that no one could touch me or do anything to hurt me. If anyone out there is around that age and has that mindset, let me tell you, that you are not invincible, and this story was my wake-up call to that fact. This happened one time when I snuck out and decided that I was going to walk to my local gas station for a Red Bull and some candy. I had some cash for my birthday, and it was quickly burning a hole in my pocket. So I figured I could spend about $10 at the gas station, and it would be good enough for now. It was in the middle of spring and about midnight so I had my window open to get the cool air in anyways. My window was easy to pop the screen out of, which I knew because I had once had to crawl in it when I had forgotten my key at home one morning during the school year. So I pushed on the corner of the screen, and sure enough, it had popped out of the frame. I quietly crawled my way out into the backyard and was able to get out of the gate without issue. I knew that neither of my parents were going to wake up to any of it, I'd done this enough to know what to do to keep the escape silent and get away without anyone finding out. I got out of my yard and started walking down the road to the gas station that was right down the street. It was about a 20 minute walk away from the house to the station, so I put in my headphones and started listening to some music on my iPod. I got to the station without issue and walked in. The clerk just kinda stared at me, as he did every time I walked alone in the middle of the night. I ignored it, grabbed my drink and a few pieces of candy, and then went to the desk to check out. After I put the items on the counter, the clerk just kept staring at me like something was wrong or something. I was a bit annoyed, so I asked him, what? Then he spoke up and he asked me how old I was. I lied and I told him that I was 17. I don't know why I didn't say 18, but I figured 17 was old enough to be doing what I was doing. He stared at me with that look of, I know you're bullshitting me, but he rang up my items anyway and told me the total. After I paid and he gave me the cash, he leaned in and then he asked me if I wanted to make some extra money. I shook my head and I asked what he was talking about and he then slowly reached down, grabbing his zipper. I just turned to walk away and I told him he was a fucking creep and then left. And while that was creepy, that's actually not where it ended. After leaving and starting my way back home, a pickup actually pulled up behind me and then slowed down to match my pace. They didn't get to the point where the window or driver was even with me. They got to the point where they were right behind me and just kept an even pace with me. This kept on for several minutes on the walk and the second I turned around to see who the hell it was, they slammed on the gas pedal and gunned it past me right down the road, and then made an incredibly fast, sharp right turn. After this, I figured I should probably make the trip quicker than I had been going. I was basically speed walking down the road, and was cutting through people's yards to cut the trip short. I turned onto my road, and as soon as I did, who else would be heading in the opposite direction but that same pickup from earlier? As soon as I saw it, I was really hoping that it hadn't seen me but they started speeding up in my direction pretty much immediately. I booked it as best as I could in my flip-flops, but every time I turned around, the truck was getting closer. I was pushing myself to go as fast as I possibly could, trying to just get into my house so I could get into my backyard, but I knew I wasn't going to make it. My only hope at this point was to go in the front door and just face the music, because if I went in the front, I was definitely going to wake up my parents as it was right by their bedroom door. 
I then started booking it toward my front door. And to my surprise, this truck stopped right in front of my house, sat there for a moment, and then screeched out their tires as they gunned it down the road. I stood there for a moment, my heart pounding, and was just thinking, holy shit, what the hell was that? After I was certain they weren't around anymore, I made my way over to the side of the house, opened the gate, then crawled back through my window. As I got back into my room, I could hear both my mom and dad talking, specifically my dad asking what the hell was going on, and I could hear him opening the front door, which I assumed was to look out front. I just sat on my bed after that, trying to gather my thoughts and really piece together what exactly that was. I honestly think that guy at the gas station knew someone else, and that he had called them, and that they had actually planned to grab me off the road. Part of me assumes then, at the beginning, the guy in the truck was on the phone with the attendant, and that maybe he was confirming that I was the person that he wanted, and then maybe they had lost me for a bit until I got over to my street. Obviously this is just speculation, but it was still creepy as hell, and it was pretty clear that the guy in the truck was trying to scare me, or find me. I think he just gave up when I got to my house, but for what reason, I really don't know. I really should have told my parents since this guy knew where I lived, but nothing else ever came of it, and I never saw the truck again. And though that was the truth, this night could have ended a hell of a lot worse. This was actually the last time I snuck out, mostly because I had a feeling that the next time, I wouldn't be so lucky and my mind just kept playing the scenario that that could have happened. It may sound paranoid, but I'm a bit of a worst case scenario type of person. To any young girls out there that have the same mentality that I had back then, I really hope you realize that bad things can happen in the blink of an eye and you're not invincible before you end up in a situation like I was in. I have a short, creepy, and weird story that happened way back when I worked at a small local gas station. I worked the second shift, and I usually got out of work at around midnight or so. So, I didn't really get to deal with the really weird people, beyond the handful of drunks we would get on a daily basis. For the most part, it was really just the people that were up late and wanted candy, or the people that worked late nights and needed the caffeine. It was a pretty good gig but I had one night that was actually really bizarre to me. It was a standard shift. I was just working and ringing up people, activating pumps for cash sales, and sweeping the store when it was empty, when a guy in a very nice suit walks into the store. I will say that the store was in a fairly middle class part of town. We got people in both directions, but I don't think I've ever seen anyone in a literal tuxedo walking into the store. I said hello as he walked in, as I always did, and I walked behind the register and waited for him to come up to check out. I glanced over at the clock and it was around 11.40 at night, so that made the tuxedo even a bit more strange. But at the same time, I figured, hey, maybe he just really liked to dress nicely when he went out. He walked up to the counter with a six pack of cheap beer, a bag of Doritos, and several packs of Reese's peanut butter cups. I started ringing him up and made a quick quip about how he was dressed. It wasn't anything offensive or anything. It was just something like, we don't normally get people in suits here at the store this late. Late night meeting or something? Basically just making small talk with the guy. He then looked at me straight faced and said the following. I want to be dressed nicely for the rapture. I chuckled a bit, thinking that this was a joke or something. And as soon as I met his eyes, I realized he wasn't kidding. I asked what he meant, basically just fishing for him to say something that would indicate that he was messing around with me or something. But he glanced over at the clock next to me, and then said, At 12.01, the world as we know it is going to come to an end, and those of us that were pure of heart will ascend. People like you will be stuck here, while the planet burns in the fire of hell. I'm sorry that no one told you about this before now. He then smiled a bit, and followed that up with. But hey, at least now you know, they can spend the next 15 minutes begging God for forgiveness. I just kind of laughed at him, and finished up ringing him up, and then told him how much he owed the store, 
but then I decided that I wanted to ask him something. So I asked, So what do we do if the world doesn't end, and the rapture doesn't happen at 1201? He then grabbed his stuff, looked back at me, and then said, Well, if the world doesn't end, then God has abandoned us, and there's nothing stopping me from coming back here to blow off your head, so you'd better hope it happens. And he then walked out of the store and back to his car. I just kind of stood there like, dude, what the absolute fuck was that? Part of me wants to think he was messing with me, but he just had a really good poker face. But the way that he said it, and how he followed it up with that threat, was just way too direct. Most people have a bit of a cracking point with their jokes, but he just kept going on with it. Obviously the world didn't end, and thankfully he never came back. But holy crap, why would you say that to someone? I have a camp that I go up to in the summer with my family. The night in question, me and my dad were heading up to the camp, and it was about 10 p.m. Now, my camp is in a pretty rural area, and the town is really old. There's a lot of abandoned houses around the little community. Me and my dad finally reached the town, and he had stopped at the gas station to get some gas and a gallon of milk. I sat in the car and I waited for my dad to get his stuff and come back to the car. There's a really old, obviously abandoned house right behind the gas station that had really been abandoned for a while. I was waiting in the car and keeping myself occupied with my phone. The gas station was well lit, and when I looked up and out of the window to see if my dad had come back from inside the gas station, I then noticed something out of the corner of my eye. I thought it was an animal in the woods snooping around or something, so I looked over, hoping to see a coyote or something. I'm very much an animal lover, and I'll take any chance I get to observe an animal. It disappeared into a bush, and then I saw another bush right in front of the house then move as if something was inside of it. I turned my head away for not even a minute, and when I looked back, there was someone standing by the side of the gas station where the stands for the propane tanks are. I got a little freaked out because I hadn't seen anyone else at the gas station. I get a really bad vibe from the guy standing there and lock the car. My dad owns a 1996 Mustang, so when I lock the car, you can hear it from a little ways away. My dad at this point is taking forever, and I'm starting to get a little worried at this point. So I texted him, and he said he took a bathroom break. But when I look back, the guy's gone. At this point, I'm very freaked out because I wasn't looking down long enough for him to completely disappear from my line of sight. I looked around and I noticed the guy standing at the gas pump right in front of the one me and my dad's car was at. I flipped out and texted my dad, extremely scared, and I told him there was a scary guy outside the car staring at it. More specifically, staring at me inside the car. My dad comes out of the gas station about a minute or two later, and the guy notices, and then makes a run for it in the direction of the abandoned house. My dad saw this and rushed to the car, so I then unlocked the car for him and he got inside. He started the car, and we fearfully and cautiously then continued the rest of our way to the camp. It was definitely a pretty creepy experience. I'm a married mother of three, and I live in a very small town in Georgia. We're in the Bible Belt, and we're really used to helping people, especially out-of-towners. And it's pretty common to see people pulled over on the side of the road with car troubles, or someone hitchhiking from a different state, as we have very long country back roads. We really enjoy helping people out, but after this incident, I'm always a little more cautious when helping someone. During this particular time, which was about four and a half years ago, me and my husband were driving down the street in my dad's three-seater pickup with our baby girl in the back seat beside me. She was nine months old then, five years old now. We see a friend of my husband's and he's standing on the side of the street holding a Jesus save sign. You see that a lot in the South. He was right beside a raceway gas station. 
We pull into the gas station in question and then see a woman sitting up against the gas station, all crouched down with her head in her knees. She looked visibly shaken and appeared to be crying. The woman had very long black hair. She only stood at about five foot two and probably only weighed about 110 pounds. She was a very small, fragile looking woman. She had a couple of scars on her arms and she had a very alarming look about her. Everyone just walked past her as she stayed in that one spot crying her eyes out. Well, my husband with his big heart then walked over to her and crouched down beside her, asking her, Ma'am, uh, are you okay? She looked over at him and then quickly stood to her feet, replying back to him, but I couldn't hear what she was saying as I stayed in the truck. But my husband just said that she said something along the lines of, My boyfriend and I got into a fight and he left me here. I'm not from here and I want to go home, but I don't have any money and he took my phone from me. I really don't know what to do. Well, my husband then told her that we'll give her a ride to the next town over where she apparently had family at. When he then came back to me and told me the situation, I'll be honest, I didn't really like the idea, especially because we had our nine-month-old baby with us, but he mentioned something about my mother watching her while we helped this lady, so I reluctantly agreed. Right about that time, my husband's friend who was still on the sidewalk of the gas station noticed my husband and started waving him down. Like, hey, come over here, let's chat. So my husband closes the door to the truck and walks over to his friend with the Jesus sign, leaving me and the baby alone in the truck. I glance back over to the lady and she's starting to walk towards the driver's side window. I didn't mention this earlier, but I'm also about six months pregnant with another baby and already have a belly. Well, since I'm in the middle seat, I waddle and scoot over to the driver's seat and roll down the window. She then tells me something else about her boyfriend, how he smashed her phone and how he's probably already with another female right now. As she's talking, she's not making eye contact or much sense. I did get a good look at her face though. She has scars all over her face and she looked like she was missing some teeth. You know that look someone has when you just know they're on drugs? Yeah, she had that look. I'm not sure what it is, but it's a sick kind of look. She tells me she's thirsty and she asks if she can have some money to get herself something to drink. I nod my head yes, and I look into my wallet. I only have like $20 on me, so I give it to her and she goes inside. Well, a couple of minutes later, she comes out of the store with a few snacks and some type of tea, and she comes back to the truck and she asks to borrow my phone this time. Now, I'm a bit hesitant, but I agree, and I hand her my phone. She barely dials a number, and then the second she puts the phone to her ear, she then starts screaming, Where are you? Are you with that bitch? I mean, she didn't even let the phone ring, so I just knew she was sort of suspicious at this point. She rambles about a minute or so to God knows who, and then hands the phone back to me. I look at the screen, and I then notice that she didn't even call anyone. There were no recent numbers dialed. I turn to her and explain that we're going to have to leave her at the gas station for a few minutes while we drop off my daughter at her grandma's, and that we'll come back and give her a ride afterwards. Then my mom only lived like five minutes away from the raceway. She asked me for my number so she can contact me, if for some reason her boyfriend comes back while we're gone. I didn't want to be rude, so I bend down looking for a piece of paper and a pen. I do eventually find them, and in a weird motherly instinct, I quickly lock the doors in the middle of talking to her, and while writing my number down. I can then see from my peripheral vision, the lady shifting her eyes to my baby sleeping in her car seat on the other side of the truck. She then gasps and says, Oh, a baby! You have a baby. What's her name? How old is she? She asks several questions in one sentence. I briefly answer her questions, not wanting to give too much information about my baby. As I'm writing my name beside my number, I see her run around the truck to my daughter's side and try and open the door. Mind you, all of this happened within 20 to 30 seconds or so. 
I look up, and I remember I locked the door, which really infuriated her. She then started banging on the window, then saying, Open the fucking door! I panicked. I stared at her in absolute horror and shock, not because she was banging on the window, but because her eyes were just solid black. There were no whites, no color at all. Her face then turned into some twisted demonic face. I had no idea what to do at this point, but I knew I had to act fast. So I quickly shifted the truck in reverse and then backed up as fast as I could without even caring if I hit her or another car in the process. She backed away, flipping me off. Then she simply ran around the building as I drove away from the parking spot I was in and then towards my husband and his friend. I had seen her go up to a really strange looking man to which they both ran out of view. It sort of looked like he was yelling something at her. I'm not really sure what they were doing or if they were together or something, but I didn't stick around to find out. When I finally got to my husband and his friend, the girl and the man were nowhere to be seen. I frantically got my baby out of the truck while crying and then ran up to my husband and his friend. We left the gas station after I explained to them while in tears what happened. When we finally got home, we decided to call the police in the gas station and they said they would check the security cameras since we happened to be parked right in front of the outside camera, but we never did hear anything else out of the situation. I'm not generally freaked out when it comes to helping people out or giving people rides, especially when my kids are involved, but I guess the moral of the story is always be aware of strangers at gas stations, parking lots, stores, or any other public looking places even if they appear to be someone as innocent as a crying lady. It's just not worth the risk.